So after our epic trip to South Oz, we decided to hit the tarmac and head west to Western Australia via the Nullarbor in search of some rawness and beauty. Oh, well, we started two days ago, so we drove 10 hours on the first day, and then yesterday we drove six hours, and we got up at six again this morning. We've been getting up at six every morning, and that's dark still. And then today we've got to drive another probably six hours, and then the day after, then tomorrow we've got to drive another 10 hours to get across the Nullarbor, so, you know, it's a long way between surf spots, <laughs> <laughs> when you're driving across Australia, you know, you don't realise when you start how how big it is and how much space in between places, eh? places and stuff like that, and it's a lot of fuel, so expensive. About halfway across the Nullarbor, we realised that the car was due for an oil change. So we had to pull over on the side of the road and pick a spot and do it ourselves. We always travel with spare filters and oil with us, always, just in case. Sooner had we done the oil change, a massive storm front came through and it absolutely poured down the whole way to Perth. So that meant we had a massive headwind and we used way more fuel. Stopping in at the Billabong Road house. Get some more fuel. That's so cheap. Well, it's been a dollar seventy four where we've been. Hey. Cheap fuel, really cheap fuel, West Oz, Bullabong, Roundhouse, very good. As we arrived on the coast, we had a spot in mind that we could stop at to go fishing and surfing and just relax and wash the drive off because we're feeling pretty slimy. Giles is doing, I think she's doing, doing some yoga in the bush. <laughs> Hello, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing, Yaga? Go away! <laughs> you doing Yaga? Yes. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of morning Yaga in the bush. Always bury it, of course. Cover it up. But yeah, it's all happening. Twelve hours. Uh, snack time, lunch on the road. Uh, we're having some rice crisps with sardine. And tomato and mayonnaise. Look where it is. <laughs> <laughs> ah, point at the sky. Ah. Here we go. Take two. We're driving on the road. We pretty much just live on sardines and rice crackers. It's so cheap. Bit of sauerkraut. Mm. Fuck, I just heard a race car go past. <laughs> Ferrari one. <laughs> Should see the blowies out here. They look fucking Ferraris. They just fly past. <laughs> They're <laughs> 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 fucking massive, eh? Oh, there's that itch again. No, oh, the itch. This is our big bommy in the back of the car. It's a bommy of Australia because Australia was once a complete reef. It's the heart of the Great Barrier Reef. There's Rock, 
and I'm not ever going to go there because I don't really need to go there because it is what it is, it's so beautiful and I think that ancient ancestors don't really want heaps of people just going there just, just to see it and take a photo at it because it's so beautiful it should just be left that was a bit deep for a cuppa we're making a coffee we have kettle that kettle's been everywhere with us that kettle that kettle has been with us for so long our friends gave us that. Kevin Mel gave us that kettle. The kettle has been everywhere, Kevin Mel. Because we have been, we've been traveling, we've been doing this for like four years. The Troopy is just like a new and upgraded version of what we used to do with our, we had two Hiluxes living in them doing the exact same thing. But we thought we needed, hey, we needed to get a bit more space, hey? Hey? We need to get a bit more space. With? With our with our home. So that's why we bought the troopy. Oh yeah. And um so that's what that's what the troopy is and it just made it a bit easier for us to get around together because we we're doing it in two cars. And now we're doing it in one. But we've been doing this for years. Hey Kanga. We've been living like this for four years out of the back of the car and we love it. Couple of covers for the drive. One thing about driving on the roads in the outback is you come across some massive trucks carrying some wild gear, taking up the whole road, and it's a mission to get around them, and you just gotta you just gotta squeeze past them and hope for the best. Taking up the whole fucking road, look! <laughs> That's some shit going on up there! Big truck come, big truck come, fuck me! We finally arrived at our destination, camped for the night, and couldn't wait to get wet in the morning. We rocked up to the beach the next morning, and there was fun little waves, two to three foot. So we both had a turn filming for a couple hours, Have you got the eggs on? which is unusual because <laughs> when the waves are good, not much filming gets done. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was a good morning. We had a ball. <laughs> That's how I know. Turn around now when you count to ten. Well, I know now, honey, that I can't pretend. Heavenly Father, this is brought to his honor.
We're just up here checking out our fishing spot and it looks pretty good this morning. And the swells, first day of, the, first day of a new swell, mm. which normally means the fish will be fish in there feeding. Be... Hey darling? Yeah. So we're pretty excited about that. We've been waiting for the swell to kick up. So a bit of action happening. Lots of wash, lots of bait. Everything's yep. on the move. Yeah, so we're going to go down to a little spot today and try and chase a few lippers and maybe a queenie. Queenie. we got to catch the tide at like, I think it's at about one o'clock high. Up here, all the fish seem to come in on the high tide because, you know, it's on the inside of the reef. Everything seems to come in and feed around with that push of the swell too. Everything just washes through. We found this mad spot where it just gullies through. Bit of current. Hey. Yeah, let's do it. Woo. Do it. Do it. Getting our rods. Didn't get far, the keys are in the door still. Is this going to be crumbed up? He has just discovered it's only got seven legs. As you can see, a fish has, fish has smashed his other leg, eh? But it's starting to grow back. Fish love these things. They're like probably the best bait out there. So I'm going to keep a couple of the legs for jigging and then we'll eat some of him too. Beautiful. I know a guy that's got a lot to lose, he's a pretty nice fella, kinda confused, got muscles in his head, ain't never been used, thinks he owns half of this town. After I caught the Oki, I ripped a couple of its legs off and threaded one up the line like a soft plastic and jigged it around and it got smashed by a big lipper and I lost it and then the next fish, boom. I got a nice size lipper, which I was stoked about. Where did you right here? Oh, 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 And that's what smashed you before? Yep, exact same feeling. A big one. Big one. Beautiful. That's a knot. I don't know if you've helped You have to undo that, darling. Yeah, no, I'm going to put a swivel on and try and undo it. Full knot, full knot in the alley. I got it in. We had a bit of a sleep in the next morning. Had a bit of a slow start, uh, so we decided to make a couple of lures. We did a stock take on our tackle box and we we're getting low on raiders. So we pulled the knives out, started to make a few new lures. <laughs> worker. <laughs> Dodgy worker. <laughs> Safety worker. <laughs> um, just making up a cuppa. That's our coffee of choice at the moment. That's on special, so that's the coffee we drink. Okay, so Nick's in the middle of making lures. So I took some of our knives out of the drawer, uh, cut them up, drilled some holes in them, chucked some split rings on them and some trebles, and there you go, we had new lures. Doing the Doing the full knife now. One on. I'm starting to get frustrated. He's getting very frustrated. Slow torture. <laughs> He's just impatient. <laughs> this is a form of Chinese torture. 
And now he's picking at me <laughs> because I'm trying my best. <laughs> and now he's in my way. He's really, really picking. Look. He's trying Spanish. to make me break. Look. Look. Oh. oh, he's so funny. Quick. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, darling. Stop looking at me. Oh. Ah! Well, if this slips off again, I'm gonna fucking. Ah! <laughs> this is funny. Oh, for fuck's sake. It'd be easier if we had a bloody pair of normal pliers. Put the bastard on. Push, 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 push. Push against me. Like a lucky dip. I'm no tradie either, so freaking. I'm sure there's a better way to use these tools. Alright. Go, go, get it in there. Oh. No! It's oh, it's on. That's Five minutes that took. Hmm. Are you the police? No, do you want me to Are stop? you the GoPro do you want police? Me to stop filming? That's a lot of footage. It's now 11 o'clock, I haven't eaten anything. So Morella's getting very low. Mick's starving. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's happy now. Mick just sprayed WD-40 in my face. <laughs> eat something. He's gonna have a go now. Alright, that's how to make a lure 101 when you're starving and got no split rings. Alright, time to go fishing. Woo! Got some fish here too for Brecky. Had him in the fridge for a few days, firming him up because they're easy to fill it. They're just nicer, the meat goes firmer and yeah. So we're going to have that for breakfast. swell had jumped right up and we were frothing to go and throw a few lures around in our spot it looked amazing oh my god jesus there's been a sighting of jesus but <laughs> jesus there's some birds out there <laughs> we on our way to us on our way to the spot there's heaps of wash looks like there could be some good fish in there so we're pretty excited <laughs> get you posted We have just got enough line to cast out there, but if something hits it, I'm gonna have to like try and stop it quick because it'll just spool me otherwise. I've got no line left. So, <laughs> <that's what happens>. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a couple of throws and all of a sudden, whack, I got hit by my first ever queenie. That was such a special moment and one I'll never forget. It felt unreal to catch a nice fish on a knife that we bought from the op shop for 50 cent. Yeah, it felt like it was all worth it. Oh, it's a good one! I haven't got my drag too tight. Hey? I haven't got my drag too tight. Yeah, get ready. This particular session, the wind was absolutely howling, so we had to put our Alvi gear away and pull out our spin gear, which was nice because we don't get to use it much. So yeah, it was good fun.
Fucking swallow, you hooked him good. It was a really good learning curve coming from South Oz where we were chasing cold water fish and then up into West Oz where we were chasing warm water fish. It's a different type of fishing, it's a completely different ball game. So we learned a lot along the way and we had a hell time doing it. So we chopped the queenie up into chunks, wrapped it in foil and threw some on the fire. And the rest we put it in the fridge and it kept us going for about a week. Good thing about fishing is that no matter where you are, you can always get a feed and keep yourself going and it costs nothing. Oh, see you later. I mean, where's those? <laughs>